Hey y'all, what's up? It's Randomizer Gamer Diz or Crazy Cuber here. And today uh, we're gonna be doing my first ever tier list video. Um, we're gonna be doing it on the weapons because I don't really know. I don't really, I've never really played all the legends before. Like I don't have all the legends unlocked. So we're not gonna be doing a, um, a legends tier list for like a really long time. We can't do a loadout tier list. Because obviously you could access all the guns in Apex. You don't. They're not all blocked by a paywall. Uh, but whatever. That doesn't even matter. Um, we're just me raiding all the assault rifles, SMGs, shotguns, LMGs, etc. And this is how the tier list is going to work. We're also going to be raiding the snipers as well, etc., etc., etc. So this is how the tier list is going to work. This is the highest tier, which is a 2 out of 2 points. This means that the gun is excellent. It's a god tier weapon and it's a must pick. One out of two points means that the gun is usable in most situations, but you're gonna want to uh, you're you're gonna want to be picking a, di a different weapon most of the time. And then and then for the uh, lowest tier, zero out, zero out of two points, um, this means that must drop. The, so basically, zero out of two is a must drop. Two out of two is a must pick. And by the way, that warning on the screen, just ignore it. It's nonsense, but I don't know. whatever. I just wanted to point that out. I don't know why. But anyways, 0 out of 2, a must drop. 2 out of 2, a must pick. 1 out of 2, a must pick in most situations. So basically, that's pretty much all the tiers. Because um, I usually score things out of 2 points on this channel whenever I do a review. Because there's good, there's bad, and there's absolutely, like, really bad unusable weapon, uh, weapons out there. So is, there are really So there are really three ratings. Three rating, there are really three ratings of weapons. But anyways, let's just get started with this tier list. Let's start out, just for fun, let's start out with the worst, the worst weapon in the game. We're going to go to shotguns. So, we're not going to be starting with the EVA 8 because I think it's not the worst weapon in the game. Let's do the Mozambique. This gun is absolute garbage. You should never use this thing. If you find it, go open another crate if it's near you. And um, go open another crate that's near you and just get like something even better. Even like some other guns that are th in a similar category as this weapon. Those guns are better than this weapon. This will always be the worst gun ever. This thing got buffed, but the buff wasn't of any use. The buff wasn't of any use at all. Uh, so basically for a good shotgun, you need a decent sized magazine, a high damage weapon, and a decent fire, a decent, a decent enough fire rate. And while this thing... This thing used to have three shots. And guess what? Let me show you this tier list. Three shots. So the Mozambique used to have a magazine of three bullets. So this thing had a clip size of one, two, three bullets. The Mastiff has a, the Mastiff has a, which we'll be talking about later in this video. This thing, this thing has a clip size of six bullets in the magazine. It used to have four once it, was a care package weapon, but we're not going to be talking about this weapon just yet. But as for comparison, seven shots, four shots. The Peacekeeper has five shots in it. Um, this thing used to have three shots in it, but they buffed the magazine size to one more shot. But if they want to make this weapon decent, they have to add at least one more shot to this gun because a good shotgun, a good shotgun cannot function with four rounds. That's just... And also... It acts more like a pistol than a shotgun. The damage is very low. It's in the 40s in terms of in terms of damage and it's not really good at it's not really good at all. And um let me show you hold on wait. Let's go to Chrome for a second. Okay, Chrome, we'll open Chrome. I'm going to open Chrome and I want to show y'all something. Hold on. Apex Wikipedia. Let's see if we could find it. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, we found it. Now, I want to show you guys something. The damage on this thing is wrong. So, um, as you can see right as you can see right here, it does 45 for a body shot. Well, the reason why I say that's wrong is it should be 48 for a body shot because Here's the thing, if you hit a low profile legend in the body, so the damage is 45, it should be 48. And look, 
low pro with a low profile legend, basically the damage increases by five percent. So basically, they take more damage, um, and the damage that they take is five percent more uh, than other legends. Than legend, it takes five percent more damage um, than legends that don't have the low profile r low profile perk. So if that was just three damage higher, then this would be 50. So that means if the player, if the player at, had 100 health, it would it would two tap to the body, it would two shot. It'd be an easy two shot. And for a start, I understand, you know, a starter gun's not supposed to be, not supposed to be overpowered, but it should at least, it should two shot to the body because it's easier and it's just like, you know, it's just, it's easier for the weapon, you know, especially for a start, starter weapon. You're going to want something that does high damage and also help the body damage if you're going against a fortified legend. Because, look, they take less damage than uh, the normal legends by 15 by 15 percent damage. Yeah, 15 percent damage. And it really it really helped. As you can see, it boosts the damage more. So if this thing did more damage and had a bigger magazine size, the fire rate's actually fine. Um, maybe if they if they buffed it a little bit, they could decrease the fire rate a little bit. But that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter because now it could um, it would two tap shield easier if the damage was 48, and it make it e and it make it easier and the, and it make the gun more viable. And for all those reasons, I'm gonna chuck. The beak, hold on, wait, where can, okay, good. I'm gonna chuck the beak. The beak is gonna be chucked at a zero at a, it's gonna be in the zero out of two class. It is not a, it's really not a good weapon at all, at all. So um, I'll use this just in case if I have to prove a point, I'll go to Gamepedia, uh, hold on. Let's get back in and let's continue talking about some guns. Some, wep some weapons, so, um, yeah, so I just, yeah, Mozambique is really not, not all that great, and let's see which other weapons we can review, so let's go to loadout, let's review snipers, so now, the next gun, the next gun, we're, the next weapon we're going to be taking a look at is the charge rifle, this thing is the snipe, is the sniper that got added in season three, and, um, you know, it, um, it's basically in the sniper class of groups, and this thing is bottom of the pack. This thing is just a letdown. It's not good at all. Um, this thing is really cool and fun to use, but those traits are completely outclassed by it being consistently poor. It's, it's pretty much consistently poor in competitive gameplay. It's not useful at all. This thing has four shots at far range does absolutely no damage. You're better off just spitting at the enemy or throwing an object at it or just, you know, shot, shot, kick, shot, kicking him, shot, kicking the enemy from long range because this thing does no damage. It hardly functions or works at all. The fire rate is extremely slow. It only has four shots in the mag and it is very useless in competitive gameplay overall. I don't see anybody using this gun at all. It's good. Now, I will say it is very good on Olympus because of the open terrain. There's not a lot of terrain. There there are some fancy buildings, but it's not like it's the biggest map of all. There's way more terrain than buildings. However, on, on like a map of World Edge, on a map like World's Edge where there is a decent amount of buildings and the map is pretty dang, pretty damn small, pretty damn small, pretty damn small compared to um, Olympus, um, on, on World's Edge, you're better off just not even using this gun at all and just dropping it for a better weapon that be that fit its better niche and it'd be a lot better and not as rare. Um, this thing is really bad and I'm going to chuck this guy. I'm going to chuck this guy in the zero out of two class. So the charge rifle. Now, one way to buff this weapon, I feel like, is to, um, first of all, uh, make it have five shots instead of four, because four is not enough. I don't care, you know, the weapon's not going to be broken at all. Just one more extra shot. Um, now, I just, I, but here's the problem. I feel like this weapon cannot really be buffed. I, I, I just, that, that's my con main concern for the charge rifle, because it's not good in any situation. It's very outclassed by any other sniper. Any other sniper would work better and wouldn't waste two ammo. 
And since sniper amp, since sniper ammo is rare and limited, um, you don't have to waste two shots if you use any other sniper. They have a bigger magazine size, faster firing, and they output damage damage more. But anyways, anyways, let's just continue on with the with the tier list. Let's get we're gonna get over all the bad guns because um, I don't want to rant this entire video. Um, so now we're going to go back to these shotguns and there is another, there is another shotgun that is a zero out of two shotgun and you're staring at it right now. It is the EVA eight. Now what's funny about this thing, what surprised me about this thing, when I first heard it was an automatic shotgun, I got pretty, I got pretty dang excited because, you know, automatic shotguns like the drum shotgun are usually very fast and nice to use and could be kind of fun to use. However, using this weapon, it, it just changed my view on it. Here's the thing. However, what makes this gun bad is its slow fire rate and fairly weak, da fairly weak damage. This thing is only good. This thing is only good if you're playing tactically with it. It's not an automatic shotgun. It fires too slow to be one. This thing is good if you're a pro player and playing ta playing tactically. But if you're a, um, but if you're an average player to a new player, you're probably going to get crushed if you use any other weapon. So if you use this weapon against any against any other weapon, and and if you're a noob to an average player or a ca or a casual player, you're going to get crushed immediately because this thing, it, it I, maybe they can increase the fire rate a little bit faster. But again, I don't want this gun to be broken or completely useless if they have to re reduce the damage to sacrifice for the faster fire rate. For the faster fire rate. So I think this weapon, I think it's a fall from grace. It's really not worth saving. And I don't think it can be saved. So this weapon, really, it's a 0 out of 2 weapon. The EVA, that's where it belongs. It's a 0 out of 2 weapon. Other than that, it's a 0 out of 2 weapon. It's not worth picking up at all. And uh, hopefully the last gun... We're going to be talking about this is 0 out of 2, the P2020. We all know why this weapon sucks. It's really not good at all. It's a 0 out of 2 weapon. Not as bad as the Mozambique, but this thing is only good with hammer points. Um, and by the way, hammer points do not increase the damage that could be done. The shields that dis that's disrupt their ammo. But it got removed um, from the loophole of, um, of hop-ups. So the only good thing that this weapon does is the hammer points. So the body damage could... Go up to 35, 35 if uh, you have hammer point hammer points attached to this thing, but they're very hard to find. And the fact they have to find a hop up to make this thing good makes this not a weapon. So watch use this weapon in the first place if you need a hop up. There's some weapons that you know are common and don't even need hop ups, which we're going to be talking about later in this video. So the P2020 is a zero out of two weapon because there's no point. You have to use a hop up for it. It's not good. Trash. <laughs> Anyways, anyways, um, let's actually review, let's go to the RE45 now. This thing, it's not bad. It's kind of a high 0 out of 2, zero out of two weapon. It's not terrible. I'm going to give it a low 1 out of 2 weapon because it's really not deserving of the other. It really does not fall in a similar, it, it really does not fall in a similar category as the rest of these weapons. In the bottom zero out of two weapon, I'd say it's in the middle of the. It's the, it's a very high zero out of two. It's not like these weapons, which are completely unusable and don't do what they're supposed to do. Um, so this weapon does not follow a similar fate as the other weapons. I'm gonna put the RE. I think the RE is very good, and I think it's worth. I think you know it's a pretty good starter gun. I'm gonna put it right here. Oh. Oh, okay. Um, so there's a there's a better look at the placement of this weapon. I was just sorry, my mom had to talk to me about something, so I couldn't really show you guys this um this beforehand. But the RE45 is going to be a very high zero out of two. It's very useful in. It's basically an average starter gun. If if you hit your shots with this thing, it could actually melt. It could be a pretty good weapon if used properly, and it does and it outclasses a Mozambique. It does way more output damage and burst damage than a Mozambique will ever do. 15 damage per pellet. I, I will, no. I will take a weapon that does 12 damage and shoots dummy fast than a weapon that shoots slow and does only 15 damage per pellet, making it, making it only do 40 damage. But anyways, let's review the wingman. So the wingman, this gun isn't bad at all. This gun's actually very great. It's a great gun, but it's a shadow of its former self. 
I actually uploaded a video uh, yesterday um, explaining why TSM, TSM Snipedown and, R and NRG ASU, I'm not sure if they're in their uh, respective clans anymore, but that doesn't matter. But that doesn't really matter. Um, they're explaining how this weapon, you know, it, it's not really, it used, to, it used to be great, but there are a couple things that, you know, this weapon, if used properly, is a very good weapon. I think this weapon is very great if used properly. And definitely, these pros are way better than I'll ever be. And I, I'm just trash. I'm a, I'm a zero out of two player, but zero out of two player at best. I'm not that bad at it. I'm not that bad at Apex. We're not going to get it. We're not going to get into it uh, today in this video. But I think this gun is pretty good if used properly. It's an average gun. It, it's okay. It's like, it's not really great for endgame, but it's also not terrible. It does what it's supposed to do. And it does a pretty good job at what it does. We're going to put this thing... Out of one out of two. This is, I'd say this is a 1.3, a 1.3 a or a 1.5. I'm going to put the wingy boy. This is where the wingy, this is where the wingman belongs. A one out of two, uh, like a lower, lowish to mid one out of two points. I think it's very good. If you get good with this thing and use it properly, it could absolutely shred. The damage is, the damage is okay, but not anything but not anything too special. But other than that, the weapon, I think it's in a pretty good spot right now. The only thing they could do to buff it is increase the maximum. If they increase the shots to nine, if they increase the magazine to nine bullets instead of eight, because the max amount of bullets you could get with this thing, with the purple extended bag, the max amount of bullets you could get uh, is nine is nine shots. So if, or the max amount of bullets you could get um, with the purple extended mag is eight bullets. If they increase that to nine, I think it could be, be pretty good, but I think it's okay. It's definitely not anything special, but I like it. It's not that bad. Anyways, let's review, let's review LMGs. I feel like this is a little bit of a, you know, a weird, a weird, a weird as, a weird as cat. There's a weird ass category. Category. Oof, I can't talk today. But anyways, I feel like there's a pretty weird cat category. The LMGs. Uh, the reason why a lot of people claim the Spitfire and the L Star L Star are trash. But let's take a look at the Devo because this thing used to be insanely overpowered back in back in season three and seasons four and five when it was a care package gun, and also the very beginning of season six. This thing was. This thing was insanely overpowered, and especially back in season three when it was a floor loot, a floor loot weapon. This thing was, you know, it still is a floor loot weapon, but it was a care package gun in seasons four and five, and it absolutely shredded enemies. But now that this thing got a damage nerf and an accuracy nerf and a recoil buff, a recoil cha recoil change. I'd say this weapon belongs right next to the wingman, right in front of the wingman. It's a one out of two points. The devotion. It's not a god weapon like it used to be, but it's also, and also the uh, turbocharger hop up is very hard and is extremely hard to find, hard to find. So um, I, I, I just, I think the devotion belongs at a one out, one out of two points. Definitely better than all the zero, the zero out of two weapons, including you, Mozambique. You, you suck for life, command. Anyways, enough about that. So we got the de uh, the devotion, the devotion right here. Now we're going to take a look at the L star. Now, guys, this thing has been slept on. People sleep on this thing. People trash talk this thing, rant about this thing. Let me tell you something. The people who rant, you shouldn't. This thing is actually very good at what it does. Yes, it can be annoying at times. I actually had to take a break from using this weapon for a little bit. In season four, I absolutely loved it uh, for no reason. Then I used it more than I then I got kind of tired of it. Then I relearned how to use the weapon, and I learned how to use it properly. And I absolutely shred with this with this thing when I actually feel like it, and when I when used in the right when used properly and in the right hands, this thing is a monster. And especially with the buffs they did to it and rampart rampart buffs rampart buffs this thing as well. It's absolutely devastating. And as a care and as a previous care package weapon, it was absolutely. It just shredded. This thing, it's almost a two out of two points. Sometimes the accuracy, accuracy could be bad, but the best way to use this weapon is to use it kind of like a shotgun and don't aim. Don't aim like this, aim more like this. And then you have the circle reticle. And then if you see an enemy, you spray it. And the way the spread's structured, it's kind of like a shotgun 
So it's kind of like, it's kind of like the Peacekeeper shotgun spread. It's kind of like a circle. It's kind of like a, a square spread, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, oh wait, let's go back to LMGs, light machine guns, light machine gun, light machine gun. Sorry. So I can actually show you the L star spread. So L star EMG. Uh, I think I think they show the spread on here. I'm not sure though. So basically, yeah, the spread's kind of like a square, a circle-ish square. It's kind of like a circle, circle-ish square, square spread, kind of like that. But um, I, actually, I, I can't really. Maybe if I um find it, uh, I think it's in here. I don't think. See, look, it is unique over, and also, you know. It could be buffed with lot modded loader, and actually they increased the shots by. So now I think it has 27 shots, and then uh, Rampart makes up 31 shots. So I think it's a very good as good as indeed weapon. This thing belongs at a top 1.7. This thing is at 1.75 to 1.8 out of two points. This thing is incredible for what people. People rip on the L-Star and the Spitfire, which is what we're going to go over next. This is where the L-Star belongs. It's a great, it's a great weapon. Very useful in the right hands. The Spitfire, totally underrated. I actually mean it. This thing, this gun absolutely shreds. I don't know why. The damage on this thing is low. It doesn't even fire that fast. They nerfed, they nerfed it and it's not even that great. On paper, it isn't. On paper, it isn't though. But when used properly... And I use this thing, if used and if aimed with correctly, if you have God to your aim, this thing could shred enemies and use against the right enemies, this thing could absolutely devastate. And even against pro players, it's nice to get damage for XP to increase your level, not to brag or flex, but look, look at that juicy ass level. And it's definitely good. And also if you have an LMG challenge, you know, like to get an easy kill or a knockdown, a quick kill or a knockdown with an LMG. And if you want to get some easy damage with an LMG, I think this LMG, I think the Spitfire is going to serve that purpose very well. And I think it's very useful in the right hands. Um, so we are going to put this, we're going to put this at a two out of two points. It's going to be right here. The Spitfire, definitely underrated, but... It's not, well, it's not a god, like, it's not an insanely god tier weapon, an insanely god tier weapon. It is definitely a force to be reckoned with in the right hands and if used properly and correctly. I think it's a, I think it's a fantastic and under, an underrated weapon overall. Two out of two points. That's our first two out of two of the day, of the night, because it's the nighttime now. Let's see if we can get, get another two out of two. R99. This thing, absolute god tier. And thank god I got a gold skin for it. A gold weapon skin for it. I wish there was a heirloom tier weapon skin. That would look absolutely sexy about the front on this thing, but yeah. Yes, I think this weapon is a two out of two. You should have to perfect the recoil patterns, but since um it's an open, since um since Olympus is a very open terrain, it's it's very hard to take cover. And this weapon is very good for spraying. It's a very you don't even have to aim with it. It's really fantastic. It's literally a two out of two points. It's fantastic. Absolutely great. It, it, it's a beautiful gun. It's a beautiful weapon. It's OG. And I'm actually, since the Volt and the R99 are so similar, this literally is the same exact weapon. Also, weapon skins on it look beautiful. Even blue skins cover up the, cover up the entire weapon are insanely good looking, but that doesn't matter. And the actual goodness, the effectiveness of the weapon is insanely good. This thing is beautiful. This thing is beautiful. Absolutely immaculate and beautiful. This thing does a lot of damage. Has a fast fire rate. Takes a lot of skill. Takes more skill than the R99. But they're still both very good weapons. The R99 is still a great weapon. The Vault is literally the same exact gun as the R99. It's just an energy based gun. It's a t gun. It's a two out of two points. Very good weapon. Fantastic weapon. Prowler. It's a care package gun. This thing has two alternate fire rates. This thing, it actually when it first went when it first went into the care package, I actually thought this was gonna get like a big a big ass buff and this was gonna be insanely and really overpowered. But it's actually I don't know. It's it's overpowered, but it's really not like 
dummy overpowered. Here's the thing. It got buffed. It was a floor loot gun in season six. It was a floor loot gun seasons one, see, pre-season to season six. Season seven, it was rotated in the care package, the pair cat. It was rotated in the care package group of weapons. Um, and, uh, yes. Uh, yes. So, um, that's kind of what happened. That's kind of what happened to it. But, um, oh, sorry for plucked the, the uh, camera. But anyways, this gun, it pretty much got all the buffs it needed in, in the beginning of season six. And they were, and instead of nerfing it, because they were planning on nerfing this thing, they decided to rotate in the care package weapon and the R99 took its place as a ground loot weapon. And I'm happy that it's back on the floor because I could absolutely shred with this weapon and I have a lot of fun with it. This gun is a two out of two points. This thing is versatile. It has two different fire modes, a five round burst, which is insanely overpowered if used in the right hands, and an automatic mode, which is dummy thick overpowered. The, 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 it's auto, yeah, it's automatic. It's beautiful, it's light, it's light, it's green, it's automatic. The, it's the Prowler. It's a two out of two. And that's all it's getting. That's its throne. That's its crown right there. Speaking of more two speaking of more two out of two weapons. Um also by the way, the alternator, it's pretty much like the R99, but with better recoil control. The slower fire rate can be a downside. It does a tiny bit more damage, and it's basically a twin barrel SMG. And while it does, you know, it does have a decently slow fire rate, it has better recoil control, and it is a very great starter gun. I'm gonna put the alternate. I'm gonna put the alternator at a one out of two. It's pretty good. I'd say a 1.25 to a 1.3 is appropriate for this weapon. I call it the alti just for short. If we can. So that's where the alternator sits at a one out of, at a one out of two tier. So the middle tier. So one out of two points around that. Around that is what the alternator gets. Um. So enough with the SMGs. We clear the SMGs. We cleared, we cleared the LMGs, um, the shotguns we haven't cleared yet. First of all, the Peacekeeper. Now, here's the thing with the Peacekeeper. This thing, it's still, it was, it's pretty much the same weapon like in season four, but I feel like I don't get why it was rotated in the care package group. The Mastiff works way better in the care package, in the care, this thing works way better in the care package than the Peacekeeper. I think if they just nerf the Peacekeeper slightly, I don't want them to nerf it too much, but like, I feel like if they nerfed it just a tiny bit, just a tiny bit, then like, I think this weapon would be fine and, bal and balanced. I like how they included, they integrated the choke in it, and I think they should keep it that way. But I feel like this weapon, I don't get why. I just, I mean, this weapon will always be, out of, be a two out of two points, but... I just don't get why I was rotating the care package weapon. I missed the old Mastiff. The old Mastiff was God tier, and I just want it back in the care package. I miss your old Mastiff. Anyways, Peacekeeper gets a two out of two points. Just because it, it's still a God tier broken weapon. PK for short. Peacekeeper, two out of two. And also, we're going to include the Kraber. We're gonna go quickly. Include we already rated the we already rated the charge rifle. It's trash. The Kraber's quite the opposite. It one shots to the head, depending on what level of hel depending on what level the helmet. If if the enemy has a gold helmet, it's still gonna one shot to the head. It used to be trash back in season one, but now it's a god tier broken weapon. It used to be a one out of two points, or even close to a zero out zero out of two points back in season one, but in season by season seven standards. This thing is a easy two out of two. All the care package guns are in the are in the two out of two points. So the Kraber is just one of them. So we got the Kraber in there as well. Now let's just now we got over that. Let's rate the let's rate the massive shotgun. This thing is a shadow of its former self. This thing used to deal 300 damage to the head if you hit the right target. Basically, if you were to hit a low profile legend in the head, this thing did 304 damage. This thing had a stock damage of 144 to the body and 288 to the head. Um, if you hit a low profile legend like like Wraith, Watson, Pathfinder, or Lifeline, this thing did 152 to the body and 304 to the head with a 2x headshot multiplier, meaning that um, the headshot damage was doubled. So it did actually do 304 damage to the head. And I calculated that in my calculator. And, I, you know, it... it 
It used to be a god tier, god tier broken weapon. I, I actually watched some old um, season three clips of of Gold Rush, and I've seen you know people like Zilbrad and other and others you know absolutely destroying and popping off with popping off with this weapon, and it was just really fun to use back then. Now it's a more skill gap type weapon, and I, I get it that the peacekeeper the PK could be kind of newbie at times, but the Mastiff man. I think they, I think this should be back in the care package, or the PK should be buffed because I feel like my shotguns, they're not as magical as they once were. This thing definitely, this thing is good late mid game and early game. It's a god tier weapon because the enemies are gonna have little to no shield. But, but other than that, but other than that, this weapon is a one out of two points. It's in the one out of two class. It's not terrible, but it used to be very good. This thing used to be a 2 out of 2, and I miss that about this gun. And I hope they reconsider about putting it back in the care package weapon in the future. But it's Apex Legends. Things change all the time. You never know what could happen to this thing, what could happen to this gun in the future. Okay, all these shotguns have been covered. The Mozambique's been covered, the EVA 8 Auto's been covered, and the Peacekeeper's been covered. So, And also, all these submachine guns have been covered. We're going to cover the assault rifles last. We covered the pistols. We covered the LMGs. We know the ratings of all these LMGs. They're pretty high class tier weapons. Let's move on to snipers. Um, we raid the Kraber and the charge rifle. Let's move on to the longbow. The longbow is kind of the second worst sniper. Nowhere near as bad as the charge rifle by any means. By any means. Urgh. Urgh. Urgh, this thing is just... So bad, sucks. But anyways, the longbow is a pretty good sniper. It's good at early, um, early game. This thing is really great. I really do enjoy this thing. Well, yeah, early games because um, this thing doesn't do a ton of damage, and the fire rate, it's actually faster than the triple take. But again, the triple take does way more damage, and the damage is more appropriate um, for this thing than uh, we're going to talk about this thing later. But the damage is more appropriate for this thing than this thing. Uh, this thing does 55 to the body. If you hit a low-profile legend like uh, Wraith, Watson, Pathfinder, etc., etc., this thing does 58 damage. And then hitting a hitting a Caustic or Gibraltar, this thing does 47 damage. The minimum amount of damage you could do is to the legs, and it does 38 da 38 damage. Although this thing is not bad early game, I think it's pretty pretty decent late early game. But if you find a Kraber in a care package, absolute, even a gold longbow, even if you find a full kitted longbow, take the Kraber over it because the Kraber could absolutely destroy an opponent with one shot to the head. This, this thing with Skull, Pier Skull Piercer deals almost 140, 250 damage to the head. This thing one shots to the head does over 400 damage at mostly any range. And the max amount of damage this thing could do is pretty obvious. Pretty obvious, it's almost 550. I calculated that in a video with Ramparts amp cover, etc., etc., etc. This thing's a 1 out of 2 points because of the weaker fire rate, the slower fire rate and weaker damage. It's not a god tier weapon, not insane, insanely good by any means, but the longbow DMR ranks... Wait a minute. The longbow DMR ranks about there. I think it's a pretty decent as weapon. I don't think this. I don't think that weapon is too bad. Uh, now we're gonna move on to the triple take. This thing is a god tier weapon. It's a two out of two weapon. They nerfed this thing multiple times in season six and the beginning of season seven. Yet it's still probably the best sniper out of all of these. The best. This is the best non care package sniper. This is the best care package. This is the best sniper in general and the best care package sniper. But this is the second best sniper in general and the best non care package sniper because the three barrel mechanic, this thing has three barrels. It does 23 damage per barrel. It is very easy to hit your shots with this thing with the choke. If you, and it's very easy to hit headshots. And with the choke integration, you could choose to turn the choke on and off. And if you have the choke on and you manage to get a really nice juicy headshot, it could do 120 damage to the head. And with the extra shots to back it up, it absolutely obliterate opponent. An opponent, even like a Gibraltar or a Caustic, a Gibby or a Caustic, it absolutely shred them 
with this thing. With this thing. And really, I think this thing is just a fantastic weapon overall. And the skins are pretty damn pretty damn solid for it to back it up, to back to back up all of its strength strengths as a weapon. So we're gonna put this thing at a two out of two points. God damn, god damn it, I can't type with one hand. Anyways, here are here are the standings for the triple take. It's in the green class, the two out of two points. Ding! Okay. The last sniper before I move on to the assault rifles, we have the Sentinel. This thing is a this thing is a low two out of two gun. This thing is a high this thing is a high one out of two a high one out of two class. Not as good as the triple take. This will always be the best sniper if used properly. Well, this thing will always be the best sniper. Noobs could use it. Anybody could pretty much use it. This thing has a bigger, a much bigger and wider and wider skill gap overall. This thing has a wider skill gap. But if you charge it up, now that they buffed, um, now that they buffed the Sentinel, and if you charge this up with a uh, with one, all you need, I think, is one shield cell now to charge it up. And if you hit your shots with this thing. This thing can absolutely shred an opponent. It's like a non-care package Kraber. It's literally like a non-care package Kraber if used properly. This thing does have a big, big ass skill gap, but it's very fun. It's very fun and good to use for the most part. And if you use it correctly and properly, this thing could take out an opponent in one hit. And the Gold Sentinel, the Gold Sentinel, the fully kitted Sentinel is a two out of two weapon, but the non-full kitted Sentinel. Ranks right here. Ranks right underneath the L Star. And actually, if you combo this with the L Star, it's not too bad. E it's not too bad either. So that's where the Sentinel sets. So those are all these snipers. This thing is really insanely good. Our last category for today is the assault rifles. We are going to be we are going to be reviewing uh, the assault rifles one by one. So here's the flat line. This thing is pretty much like a Volt and R301 combined. It's a little bit on the slower side, but the damage is, this thing hits hard. It five tap, it five taps to the body pretty much. Um, if you're shooting at a low profile legend and then a non low profile legend, it six taps, six shots to the body. In a fortified legend, it, I think seven, takes seven shots to kill to the body. Has a 2x headshot multiplier, which is a, which is a good thing. A good thing that it has a 2x headshot multiplier because another because other 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 snipers slash assault rifles in this video they got their headshot multipliers reduced but this thing is a solid to it's in the two out of two class i think i'll give it a low two out of two i think this thing is good i think it's in a pretty good spot right now respawn hasn't really touched this thing i think it, i think it's in a pretty good spot it used, it used to be insanely overpowered Back when there was Anvil Receiver in the Anvil Receiver in the game, but even at long range, if you use it, um, if you change it to single fire mode, uh, and if if you change the uh, the fire mode to single fire, and if you use it at long range on Olympus with the open terrain and such and et cetera, et cetera, and the bigger map, I think this thing could be pretty damn pretty damn good at long range too. It's it five shots to the body, which is unlike pretty much any assault rifle except for the G7, which we'll talk about in this video. It's a two out of two points, a low two out of two points, high one at high one out of two points. It's up there with um, the two out of two class class of weapons of weapons, but um, this thing's pretty solid, pretty damn good assault rifle. Skins are also cool too, but that doesn't really matter. But ooh, nice, nice. Anyways. G7 Scout. So the uh, G7 Scout uh, used to be a sniper rifle. This used to be a god tier broken weapon because it could use the high class scopes. It could use the gold digi threat sniper scope, and it and it was really darn good. Although it got nerfed by today's standards, it got a headshot multiplier reduction, a fire rate reduction. This gun will still always be great. The fact that it uses light ammo and hits as hard, it four it takes four shots to kill to the body so pretty much at you know pretty much any character if you hit a character in the body in the body it it takes four shots to kill which is very good and with the decent enough fight and with the decent enough fire rate not as good as what it used to be but it's still it's still decent enough 
and the damage is the fire rate's appropriate, the damage is appropriate, appropriate. The fire rate is appropriate and the damage is appropriate and the um everything about it is perfectly normal. Double tap trigger, I could some it could sometimes be a little bit inaccurate with the double tap trigger, but in single fire mode, this thing is insane at long range. It's pretty much like your marksman rifle. This thing is a high one out of two points. I'm going to put this just like the RA45 in the middle of the one out of two class. It's really insanely good. This is where the G7, the G7 belongs. Just short for G7, by the way. G7. So the G7's right here along with the RA40, RA45, which is right here. So the G7 Scout's been covered. The Hemlock is probably... I actually have two skins for this, uh, Glorious One and Performance Boost. Both insanely, both insanely good skins, but that doesn't really matter. The weapon is insane. It got a headshot multiplier reduction and an accuracy reduction, reduction and a fire rate reduction back in Season 3. That's when the Hemlock was trashed, but it, it took a 180-degree shift. This thing is insanely good. It was insanely good back in Season 1, and it's insanely good by today's, today's standards, even with the nerf. This even with the nerf that it got in season seven. This thing with the burst mode, if you hit your shots, you can pretty much one shot an enemy with with um no shield and two and two shot an enemy with two shots of the hemlock with um purple shield. With red shield, not so much. Red shield's a little bit OP. Uh they nerf that. They nerf that now to bring to bring time to kill in line. This weapon's insanely good. It'll always be good and great. And great. This thing is just man. It's insane. It's insanely good. This is probably the best assault rifle. I'm gonna put it at a two out of two points. It's a, it's it's a two out of uh, it's a two out of two. It's where the triple take is. So this is the hemlock. The hemlock is a two out of two class. Boom. Boom. I can't really clap using one hand, but um. Two more assault rifles, then I could shut up and stop talking and upload and upload this video or edit this video. I'm, <clears throat> let's just get this over. R301, R301 is a god tier assault rifle, the second best assault rifle. Not as good as the Hemlock, but at long range, if you use single fire with this gun at long range, it is insanely accurate if used correctly. It has a fast fire rate, can be used in close range, long range. It's the most versatile assault rifle. And that's why I put it at a two out of two. It's up there definitely for sure. This is the R301 assault rifle. Two out of, it is a two out of two points gun. The last gun is the Havoc. This is a, this thing used to be, this thing used to be insane. So this is the Havoc. It used to be insanely broken back in the earlier seasons. It got a magazine reduction, magazine size reduction. Uh, it got, you know, some other reductions, I guess. It didn't really get a fire rate reduction. It, it got less accuracy. Accuracy. This only this thing is only good for getting assault rifle damages, for challenges, and getting tags. It could be good in early game, but nothing much else. This thing is getting a low, fairly low 1 out of 2 points. I'm going to give it a 1 out of 2. Why not? This thing wasn't as good as it used to be. But yeah. So yes, this is pretty much my tier list of guns. I think the guns are mostly in the in a pretty good spot, except for the low class weapons, which are right here. The high class weapons, they might need to nerf some of these a tiny bit, but I think and maybe adjust them. Like the PK should be back on back on the ground, um, back as floor loot. But I think the weapons are pretty good overall. The Master's fine, the Devotion's fine, the wing, the Wingman's fine as it is. Just buff it a tiny bit. Just buff, just buff it a little bit. And I think it should be fine. But other than that, these are my thoughts. So pretty much, so pretty much these are my thoughts on the uh, Apex. These are my thoughts in the Apex Legends weapons. Let, let me all, y'all let me know in the comments down below if you agree or disagree with this. Do you think... Do you think some weapons, some lower class weapons should be 2 out of 2 or 1 out of 2? Or some higher class weapons that I rated should be 0 out of 2? Um, just let me know in the comments down below. I'm going to shut up and stop, talk, stop talking. Uh, I can't even talk at this point. See y'all in the next one. Bye. And also, I was supposed to be doing a uh, cooking. I was supposed to be doing a recipe. One of my new recipe videos today. But I, I couldn't manage to cook that. So I did this instead. I've been talking for over a half hour. 
See you on the next one. See you on the next one. Bye. Later. Peace out.